Welcome to the Classy Council, Reflections for the Wise and Elegant Lady. I am Nadia, your Elegance Coach, and in this weekly podcast, I bring you insights on how to cultivate the attributes of a lady that is elegant and not only elevated in terms of appearance, but also on a much deeper level, spiritually elevated. You'll find cross-references made with verses from the Bible and from other sources of wisdom. Whether you are a beginner or advanced in your journey towards the most elegant version of yourself, a curious learner, or simply looking for some more elegant mindset inspiration, you are in the right place. So, grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and join me on this journey of discovery and growth. Self-respect is the root of everything. Let's look at it from Confucius. Respect is defined as the feeling of consideration and esteem that we have towards someone or something. It involves recognition of the value and dignity of others. Its synonyms include deference, honor, reverence, and consideration. The opposites of respect could be contempt, disrespect, insolence and disobedience. When I decided to talk about respect, I couldn't imagine not talking about self-respect because I find that one does not go without the other. Someone who does not respect themselves will have difficulty respecting others. And someone who does not respect others reflects the level of consideration they have for themselves. Cultivating respect for yourself and others in your life as an elegant woman means ensuring good relationships because respect breeds trust and goodwill and promotes harmonious and lasting interaction. It is also about strengthening your self-confidence. Although you need to have a minimum of self-confidence to instill respect, respecting yourself and being respected by others also nourishes our feeling of value and self-esteem. It works like a loop. I have confidence in myself, therefore I respect myself, therefore I respect others, and by respecting, I increase my self-confidence, and so on. But I believe that the ultimate advantage of respect is being able to live in a positive environment, to live in harmony and peace with oneself and with others, because mutual respect generates climate of trust, collaboration, and serenity. It seems simple and totally logical, but like all things that may seem simple, there is a complication behind it. And the main one is the fact that we are all different. But in this podcast, we focus mainly on the elegant woman. As a reminder, we do not only talk about the woman who dresses well and who presents well, we focus on her state of mind. Elegance cannot only be external, it emanates from the inside. So how is respect manifested in an elegant woman? First, she speaks to others politely and courteously, with everyone the same way, no matter age, the gender, the status, or social class. There is a famous quote that sums up the idea very well. Treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. And please do not see this as a condescension towards the janitor profession. The aim of this quote is to mark the difference of status because whether we like it or not, as as a society, we do not consider a janitor to be of the same status as a CEO. What this quote reminds us is that respect is not motivated by a person's status. It should not be motivated by a person's status, but by the fact that they are a person. If we give attention to someone based on their status, it is because we are focusing on what this person can bring to us. If we consider that this person cannot bring us anything and therefore does not deserve our consideration, we therefore have selfish motivations. This unfortunately reflects poorly on the value we place on ourselves, it doesn't look good. If I saw myself giving consideration to someone based on their status, I would ask myself, 
on what do I base my self-worth then? Politeness and courtesy is the basis. The elegant woman does not need to be close or to become friends with everyone. That is not the idea, but basic civil decency is politeness and courtesy to everyone. A simple hello with a smile, a warm tone, a please, a thank you. I know that many will say that is useless to remind, but I can guarantee you that in 10 years of career as an etiquette expert, these are things that I must always remind people because I have seen a lot and I still see people who do not feel obliged to use the simple words of courtesy because, for example, let's say they are in a store and they believe that the, the salesperson is there to do their job. So they don't need to say these little words. They don't need to look at them in the eyes when they talk to them. So from the moment you start to categorize and target, um, this person deserves my politeness, this person a little less, this person a lot, this person not that much, then you have not understood the basis of respect. And there is a good chance that the respect you have for yourself is either low or damaged. In any case, acting so selectively does not inspire greatness, honor, nor elegance. You may feel like you're growing taller and you, you are bigger or better when you act like this because uh, you wouldn't dare interacting with someone lower, like lower than you. It's snob. And snob is not elegant. Second, um, the elegant woman, the woman of value, will listen carefully to the opinions and feelings of others. There is an important ingredient to being able to do this, and that is self-confidence. If you have confidence in yourself, in who you are, you will be able to listen to the opinions and feelings of others without showing yourself off without being afraid of compromising your beliefs or who you are. Many are unable to put themselves in the other person's shoes because unconsciously they think that if they understand an opinion different from their own, they will have to admit that they are wrong. <laughs> However, the person who has confidence in themselves will know how to listen to different opinions, will even understand them, and will then be able to decide whether or not this changes their own perception. This is what we call um, agree to disagree. Third, the elegant woman respects her commitments and promises. Her word is important to her. She's loyal to her word. There are people who will say things to you to please you, knowing very well that they will not have the intention of doing what they promised. They are not bad because I sincerely believe that for the most, it's because they want to please, they don't want to offend, they don't want to disappoint, they don't know how to say no. Um, so they find that making false promises is an effective temporary solution. The problem is that it is temporary because the moment always comes when we realize that they have lied and we cannot rely on them. And what they do not realize is that with each lie discovered, their reputation is damaged. And over, I've already said it, one of the things inherent in human beings is the need to feel safe with others. To see them as liar or not reliable is to be in danger. You cannot trust someone whose word cannot be trusted. This is why the woman of value knows how important it is to keep her commitments and will prefer to say no or don't say anything rather than say yes to please and then back out. If this is something you are struggling with, I assure you, you are not a bad person, but you are shooting yourself in the foot. You are unknowingly tarnishing your reputation. And the solution is to learn to say no, to respect yourself first and to say no. The Bible also says, let your no be no and let your yes be yes. I love the analogy with God because the only thing that is sovereign above God is his own word. If he says something, 
um, if he makes the promises, then it must happen. It will happen. That's the same thing for the elegant woman. If she says, I'm in, then she's in. Fourth, she is honest and has integrity in her words and actions. She doesn't just do the right thing when you look at her. She does things even at home alone, isolated and hidden from everyone. And this has to do with the way she sees and considers herself. Here, we really touch on self-respect. If I know that I am a woman of value, that I am faced with a situation that can shake my principles, I will not act based on whether I am seen or not. I will act based on, is this really the behavior of the woman of value that I am? Is this action or word in line with my principle, my character, my personality? By reasoning like this, we build our sense of honor, our self-confidence. We become more and more unshakable because even if someone one day comes to face you and slanders you, that can happen, that can happen to anyone, well, then you will remain calm and serene and sure of yourself because you know that you are right in your actions. No matter the time, the place, the visibility, no matter if anyone has seen you or not, you know your level of integrity. You have nothing to be ashamed of. And even if it turns out that an action was a mistake, you know in your soul and conscious that it was only a mistake and that your intentions were always the best. And now the fifth way the elegant woman demonstrates respect and self-respect. She dresses appropriately for situations and context. She does not neglect herself. Note that I'm not saying like she's all dressed up. No, no. An elegant woman can be elegant, even casual. To be elegant, you must, one, have impeccable hygiene. Showered, hair is clean and styled, and the nails are clean as well. Two, you must be dressed correctly, appropriately, depending on the situation. If the elegant woman is babysitting that day, she is casual, but elegant. If she plays sports, she is in sports clothing, but elegant. If she is going to work and knows she will be in contact with clients, she wears elegant professional attire. If she lives in the countryside and goes to collect eggs in her end house, she will have the appropriate but elegant outfit. If she has lunch with friends, she will be casual chic, still elegant. You see, having an elegant style actually means working on the style to express who you are. It's choosing quality clothes, it's the opposite of vulgar, but it's also knowing how to juggle between different activities in which we are engaged on a daily basis. I often tell my clients, it's not about wearing a tuxedo at work, that's not elegance. It's a bit like eloquence in the end. Eloquence is not, you know, big scholarly words thrown around. It's the ability to choose the right words adapted to the audience so that the message is delivered as faithfully as possible. Being elegant means expressing the beauty of your soul by knowing how to um, create um, outfits according to places, to people and activities. By dressing elegantly, you are first of all true to yourself. It is self-respect because you want to reflect these values which are yours and you are also respectful of others because they deserve to see these beautiful values that you want to share with them. You know, when you dress elegantly, it's really you showing self-respect to yourself and you showing respect to others because it's a message. You're telling others, well, you're worth me making the effort so we can share these values together. Do you know what I mean? Anyways, to summarize points four and five, actions, words, and way of dressing, the elegant woman knows that it is important for her to demonstrate through these channels how much she respects herself if she wants others to do so. I really deplore the young woman of today who dress too vulgarly, who post photos on the um, social media in a suggestive manner, 
without understanding the message they are delivering. And don't get me wrong, I know we are in a society where it's, we always overly say, I do what I want, uh, this is a free country, whatever. Yes, it's true, you do whatever you want, but I'm addressing, I'm actually talking to the young women who are working on themselves and who wants to be elegant, not only elegant physically, but, you know, mentally. So I'm just saying you with all my love, you do whatever you want, but just be aware that you deliver a message in the way you post picture, how you pose on your on your social media, how the clothes you're choosing to wear. Many think that they are not doing any harm, that they are doing this for themselves, but in reality, they are doing a lot of harm to themselves. All I see in these behaviors are people who need to attract attention. They need male attention in the worst way possible because they are self-objectifying and then they will complain or cry that men treat them like objects. Yes, of course, there are men without great principles who will objectify anyone anyways. But what I'm saying is not all men are like this. And please don't be a girl who gives them reason to think that they can, they can, they can mess with you. They can, they don't have to respect you. Before posting to the whole world this picture, which focuses on this feminine attribute with which nature has generously endowed you. Ask yourself the question, is this a photo that my future mother-in-law would like? If I had a son, a husband, would they be proud to have their mother, their wife, so generous to the whole world? I'm saying to the whole world because usually those uh suggestive posts and, you know, um, are usually on public profiles. I'm not saying there's no private girl, well, woman who's doing it on private, but I'm saying usually those um, profiles are public to attract as much attention as possible. And also ask yourself, do I want my reputation to be based on this generous attribute the nature gave me only? The way you speak, the way you behave, and the way you dress reflects how you respect yourself. It reflects how you feel about yourself. If you appear too open, um, you will have difficulty coming across as someone who respects themselves, and consequently, you will not be respected. Now that we see what respect for oneself and others looks like, we will raise a few points that are necessary to cultivate respect. First, be aware of your worth and your dignity. If you don't see how much or why you are worth receiving respect, you won't be able to give or give it to yourself. Start by defining your values. Remember the list of values I shared in the episode on self-confidence. This is the first thing I have my clients do. I ask them to determine their main values, those which define them, which draw the guiding line of their life. I even ask them to create a motto revolving around these chosen values, which they appropriate and put everywhere in their, I don't know, in their journal, um, in their room, in their wallets. Uh, make it a keychain. I don't know. I had a client who added her motto on her email signature. My motto is in the description of my WhatsApp profile. It's faith, family, and fortitude. Now give yourself value by clearly defining in concrete words your principles, what you live by and what you live for. Be as authentic as possible because it really has to reflect who you are, who you want to be. Second thing to cultivate respect is to set clear boundaries and stick to them. It's about putting, setting boundaries uh, for yourself, learning to say no without feeling guilt. You have to know what you accept and what you do not accept. You have to know how and when to leave places, people, situations, habits that are not in line with who you are or who you want to become. 
every situation, place, people, habits that make you feel bad, you have to drop it. Those who have difficulty setting up boundaries, I assure you that you will be liberated the day you understand that saying no will not make you a bad person and it will not make you rejected. It will not make you a rejected person, at least certainly not by good people. Number three, express your needs and expectations assertively. Just be clear, you know, being clear and firm doesn't mean being mean. You can be very gentle, you can be very feminine, very kind, while still being firm and clear. Let's let's imagine you're a housewife. This can sound like, I need to rest. It's important for me to be in good shape, to be able to give the best of myself. I need my energy. Can we agree that on Sundays, I do not do any household chores, right? This is just an example, but here it is about, ex you know, expressing a clear need, briefly explaining what we feel, and it's saying, I expect you, the family, to not ask me anything on Sundays. Number four, show empathy and compassion towards others. Learn to put yourself in other people's shoes. If you are faced with someone who is angry, do not necessarily be quick to think that they are a bad person, but rather that they are a good person who is suffering. I'm not saying that bad people don't exist. They do exist, and we must avoid them at all costs. But I sincerely think that 90% of the population is made up of good people and that just many suffer. And their suffering is reflected in their attitude, their actions, their language. So don't let their problems, their sufferings affect you and um, have any kind of influence on your reactions and your feelings. Number five, be grateful to people who respect you. Gratitude is a premium quality, if I can put it that way. I'm even thinking of making an episode of it because it's really another pillar. Gratitude keeps you positive and it has this magical effect of attracting to you even more of what you are grateful for. I know this speaks a lot to those who believe in the law of attraction, but it is indeed the case. The more grateful you are for the respect that someone has for you, the more respected you will be. Finally, and this is number six, do not tolerate disrespect from others, whether it's a close person or a stranger. And it's not about fighting, responding, insulting, and speaking out. You just withdraw. It's your, your, your presence is valuable. That's your value. It's you. You just withdraw. You don't need to fight. You don't need to explain. You don't need to convince. You just withdraw your presence. You have nothing to do with anyone who does not give you the consideration you deserve. Your sense of value, of self-respect, must absolutely be stronger than the fear of rejection and loneliness. Know that if you have value, and you do, you do have value, the right people come to you naturally. Those who will see and recognize this value will be there. But do not waste your time seeking validation, recognition from someone who does not respect you. Because this person or these people don't respect, most likely they don't respect themselves. And they have some deep work to do in themselves. And you cannot force them. You cannot change them. You cannot help them have them work on it. You cannot open their eyes on the fact that they have probably traumas or or difficulties or suffering deep inside that is blocking them from respecting themselves and therefore respecting you and seeing your value. So just withdraw and stop being scared of being lonely. Stop being scared of being rejected. You are a valuable person. You're very good and you will meet the right person. You will not be alone. I'm telling you this. If you are in a circle of friends who put you down, leave. You are not in the right place and they are not your friends. It's fine. Bless them. It's okay. Uh, pray for them if you want. Forgive them. You don't need to hold grudges. You need to talk to them. Just leave. You will find others who will be aligned 
with your values. All right, so to conclude, I will simply summarize the six things to do to cultivate respect and self-respect. Number one, define your values. Number two, set boundaries. Three, express your needs and expectation clearly. Number four, have empathy and compassion. Number five, cultivate gratitude. And number six, don't tolerate disrespect. Be elegant, be respectful to others and to yourself. And I am ending this podcast today with a very well-known verse, since it is also what we call the golden rule. It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It says, whatever you want men to do to you, do that to them too. If you liked this podcast, if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment, like or share. If you also like affirmation words, visit my YouTube channel, Madame Kabongo. You will find a video specifically on respect in the playlist, Affirmation for the Elegant Woman. For even more advices to become the best version of yourself, um, to learn etiquettes, to learn the secrets of elegance to know more about communication follow me on um, instagram and youtube you will always find me there under the same name madame kubongo thank you and don't forget to respect yourself and others see you next week <laughs>